friends, and good morning, good evening, good afternoon. It's Joyce, Joyce All Knowing Tarot, and I am back with another video. Woo, Lordy. Uh, the wedding was fantastic. The wedding and reception. So the deal was they got married on Friday down in a little city called Holland, Michigan, at the courthouse. The courthouse would not allow everyone to that wanted to be there to go there, you know, because we do have a little thing called COVID that's still going on, a pandemic still going on. And so they could only have uh, two witnesses. So that was Camille and um, uh, her husband's cousin. So the following day, which was Saturday, which we had already planned, there was a uh, the reception and a reenactment of the wedding. Let me put my mic down some. It was a reenactment of the wedding. So that was fantastic. So we decided to just take some clips of different things. We didn't want to do too much in a video. We didn't want to give you too much, but just enough for you to see the, um, the ceremony that was reenacted, as well as some of the dances, uh, first dances, and things like that. Um, it was a wonderful time. It started at 2 in the afternoon, um, and everyone was getting there and getting situated. Then the ceremony actually started at about 4.30, and um, it was on from there. And I mean, people stayed until like 1 o'clock in the morning. And I got to give a shout-out to my neighborhood. They were fantastic. We had friends coming over telling us we could park in front of their house or we could park in their driveways. They were making room in their driveways because we had a lot of people that started coming the later it got. You know how you have the first crowd that always comes to the wedding and then the reception, you have even more people, you know, for the food and the drinks and all that kind of stuff. So um, it was a fantastic day. And I'm going to tell you something. Between myself and my uh, son-in-law's, mother we had like old country buffet or whatever las vegas buffet or whatever buffet you can imagine we had everything from beef and fish and all kinds of uh, salads and fruit salads and all kind of sides it was just more than you can imagine and do you know that that food was gone by the end of the night in fact i never even had a plate of my food i just uh i smoked my uh ribs okay and um, and then I barbecued at the end just to get the sauce on. I took one bite, you know, just to make sure the seasons was just right and the sauce, I make my own sauce was right. It, then they were fantastic. That's what I had of the ribs. But, um, yeah, it, and that was fine. I just We just wanted to make sure that the kids had a day that they could remember. And everyone was super generous with them. And if you haven't seen the video, please watch the video. It's so sweet. Um, Camille put it together and it's a nice oh and people were asking me about why can't we hear the soloist I want to hear the soloist she was singing a very popular song by a very big artist I'm not even going to name that and uh, I would got have been in what I call YouTube jail I would have got dinged so badly because um, I'm not licensed to play any music when you hear people playing those little weird z songs or little songs that camille put over it's because you're not allowed to play music unless you are licensed to pay that music you know or you're able to pay the uh record label not the artist themselves but it is the label that stops us from doing that so that's the reason it couldn't be played but i just wanted you guys to know she literally had me with goosebumps um my husband was crying uh, my daughters were crying. I was behind the camera crying just in chills. The love that she put into it was just phenomenal. Just a lovely young lady from uh, from Kentucky. Yeah, so it was a lot of fun. Okay, so back to business, you guys. Um, Thursday, Linda G is coming to visit us. I'm very happy. I love Linda. I love her on our rapport, but I love her off camera too. She's more fun even off camera. Lovely family, everything. But we're going to do it live. I said, let's, do, let's go live. She's like, well, you want me to go live? Sure, I'll go live. So I'm very happy. Um, I don't, I've never seen Linda live. Usually her videos are taped. So I thought it would be fun for us to come together as a family with Linda G and go live. So instead of putting questions, or you know, unless you want to, you can email me your question. I've got a few questions from people already. Um, and Cammie should have made the... Um, 
post up in the community board. If she hasn't, we'll get that done. If you do want to drop a question, you don't want to, you know, be part of the live or you can't be or whatever. Um, but otherwise, we will be answering right straight out of the chat so you can see us at actual at work at whatever. I'm so excited. Now, that'll be this Thursday, um, the 17th of June. The 18th, I get my second dose of the vaccine. Yes, I got the vaccine. So I get the second one then, and then next week we are out of town. But I'm going to I'm going to be filming, though. Um, I'm going to do something different, and that is vlogging. I've never done that. So I'm going to take you to some of Milwaukee's fun places, restaurants, this and that, anywhere they can let me bring a camera. Please don't judge. I've never vlogged, but I'm going to work on doing that as well, just to give you guys something to see, especially if you don't get to go out or you just want to see what Milwaukee looks like. It's a great city. So today, I want to do a reading on Donald Trump and Mike Pence. I think that Donald Trump is jealous or envious of Mike Pence. But then let's face it, who else is, you know, he's jealous of everybody. If, you, if, it, if he can't be number one, then he doesn't want to be, you know, plain and simple. Uh, and I'm going to be using <clears throat> The Murder of Crows. So evidently, Mike Pence got a book deal. He's going to be writing a book. Um, I don't think it would be a book I would read. Well, as a matter of fact, I'm gonna tell you, I wouldn't, I wouldn't read it. Um, because Mike, you know, God bless him. You know, he's very much into his evangelical world of Christianity. Um, and so he's already gone into the forgiveness aspect of the insurrection day. Um, I, evidently he and Trump have talked, but, um, he's got a book deal. Um, guess who doesn't have a book deal? Yeah, you guessed it. You're a president. Um, now, he's saying that he's had all kind of book deals, and he's turning them down and everything else, and he's been just writing, writing, writing. Come on now. This is the Kofifi guy. But you've been writing and writing. But he, he says that he is going to have the best book, no, the greatest book of all times. And I thought that was the Bible. So, you know, maybe I'm confused. <laughs> the greatest book of all time. Anyways, that's what he's supposed to be doing. So I want to see, um, first of all, I want to see how Trump really feels about Pence. Because in Trump land, everybody is beneath him. That's what he says. Oh, once again, I'm going to tell you I'm back in my office. I moved out of my office because my daughter was uh, uh, coming back once the pandemic hit last year. Like... Uh, yeah, like close to, yeah Thanksgiving time and so behind you you see the bed that she was in um, but that's my bed if I um, that's not my bed bed but it's my spare bed for company or whatever but anyways um, so when she left and um, they have an apartment in a little city not too far from me um, I didn't move in here right away because I said I need some new carpet so I had to wait that long um, from March until uh, last May. So this is how Trump feels about Pence. And I'm using my desktop computer. So move it over a little bit. So there we go. Okay. So first of all, um, Trump can see that uh, we have the chariot. That um, Pence is moving forward in his life. He doesn't want to dwell on all of that or talk about going back into office. I don't even think that Trump would have him back in the office. But he doesn't want to do all of that. Um, Pence is moving on and I think that bothers Trump that he is able to move on he's going to write a book he's going to be back heavy in his church and whatever else I don't even think he's doing anything else other than those two things and in terms of uh, this is the high priestess uh, it's almost as if Trump knows what he's done to Pence you know how you know something although Pence is saying I want to I just want to get past this, right? I just want to get past this. I want to just move on with my life. They both know what happened, okay? High Priestess knows all the secrets. There's no confusion about anything is what she tells you. She says the answers are within. She's very intuitive. She holds the law in her hand. You don't get past anything else, any temples or anything else going through the truth, and that's like real life. And so 
Trump knows what he did to Pence, and he see he sees Pence doing something that he's not able to do, which is forgive and move on. Um, we've got the nine of pentacles, but it's in reverse. And this is Trump, you know, not having the ability to stand up on his own and be independent and speak for himself or whatever. Um, no, but Pence does. Okay. So he can see Pence is being a grown up about the situation and it bothers him. And he's concerned about what Pence may write because he may come out with some truths. You know, he is a Christian. Um, I don't know what his subject is going to be on, but I think that for sure Trump sees that, you know, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to stand up and, you know, I'm not, I may not be able to stand up for myself because this is about independence and success. And he was a failure in office, no matter what they try to tell you. And he knows that Pence knows the truth. And if the truth comes out, he feels like the tower would come crashing down on him. But the tower is really saying to Trump, you need to be in a place of forgiveness. You need to take responsibility. You need to break down your walls of, of lies and charades because you've never lived a real life. Uh, the touch of reality, you know how everybody knows that. Somebody that really hates themselves and then they can't be real enough to say that this is what I do or this is, you know, my shadow side or this is my light side. So I see him uh, feeling towards Pence I don't see any love here at all. I see no love at all. I see a Trump thinking about Trump, one to protect himself, not one to be uh, anything told on him, really in fear that the other shoe is going to drop and Pence is going to reveal something. Yeah. And he sees he sees Pence moving on. Like Pence and he and Pence may have had a conversation, but they definitely are not having tea or lunch or anything else. He's moved on. Because Pence sees who he is, and Trump knows that. Now let me just see what does Mike Pence feel about Trump. I want to know. Maybe, you know, he says he's a religious fellow and all of that. Maybe he does feel great about him. So how does my cards? It's so funny. It's really not the cards. It's uh, my guides that come through. Okay, so in terms of how Pence... Uh, Prince, Prince, do you hear me? Pence is feeling towards Trump. He's got the King of Pentacles in reverse. King of Pentacles in reverse is greedy, uh, power hungry, thirsty for fame and adulation. He's a type of person that has to always get a pat on the back. And if he don't get a pat on the back, you know, he's going to feel some kind of way. He's going to pull funds or He's going to money grub. You know, this is a very financially irresponsible type of person. And Mike Pence, this is why I'm laughing. Look, Mike Pence says, you're right. If you thought I was moving on, I am moving on. I'm moving away from Trump. We've got him with uh, the um, with the uh, emperor card. I'm sorry. With the emperor card. He says, that I'm going to be back in control of my own situation, in my own environment, in my own town, maybe in my church or what have you. But no more will I have anybody lording over me and me making choices that's against myself or my religious beliefs. I'm moving on. He says that he wants to, uh, Pence wants to restore his own balance. He wants to be in a place of healing and hope and just not really react, you know, be slow to react, right? Um, like that saying, my mother used to always say this, Joyce, be slow to anger and quick to forgive. And that is Mike Pence. That's what he feels about Trump. He just doesn't want to be bothered with it. And <clears throat> we have the seven of, <clears throat> excuse me, seven of swords in reverse. And he feels like, I don't want to be part of Trump's dishonesty anymore. I don't want to be a part of that. I'm not trying to get away with anything. I'm not trying to lie on anything. I'm not going to be deceptive. No, I'm going to be a grown up, a full grown man, and I'm going to be responsible. Only thing is, um, you could have did that while you were in office and spoke your truth. But he felt like, and I told you this, and this has come to pass, he felt it was his 
calling, like God called on him and chose him to do that job. Maybe in a sense he was right. But he sees Trump as a loser. I'm going to put it like that just to be blank and honest. And he has he's moving on from Trump. So he's, just, he's not putting a lot of energy into Trump. What in, you know, in terms of his thoughts or his feelings, he doesn't show up in here strong other than he's, he doesn't have the money, he's, he says. He's a, a me, uh, money grubber. Everything is about a money, money, money deal. I'm moving on from that. I don't need all of that. And he wants to, like I said, restore his life, restore balance in his life. And I'm not going to be part of any lies or, or anything else that uh, is regarding Trump. I don't want to be involved in it. And then last, really quickly, guys, if you will indulge me. I just want to see, the, is Trump writing the greatest book of all times? Please take that in the spirit of laughter that I am. Is Trump writing the greatest book of all times? By the way, I want to thank you guys for all the kind words that you offered. The congratulations. Um, for the wedding. Did I say that already? If I didn't, then I'll just say it again. But I do. It was so wonderful. I was so touched. And uh, yeah, I was very, very moved. You don't have to do that. And for you to do that, it meant a lot to me, to my daughter. I had her go back through my comments and read them so she could see the positive energy that's going towards them. Someone was, <clears throat> someone did mention about them. They were too young or something like that. Listen, that girl's almost 30 years old. They just look young because they're short. But anyways, um, and it's her life. And no matter what, um, the spam actually it turned out that my husband lived uh, two doors down from his whole son-in-law's grandparents and family and everything else. So they've got a lot, a lot of family support. But they're not babies. Uh, Trump's book. Will there be a Trump book? Because you remember Art of the Deal, he didn't even write that. He, could, In fact, that author spoke, I don't know if you ever read that, that Trump couldn't even sit down long enough to do a book, you know, work with the ghostwriter. Nah. Mm -mm. First of all, we've got the Eight of, uh, this is the Eight of Swords. So his mind is so conflicted and tied up, and I swear that he is going into some type of dementia. It's very clear to me. I feel it that it is. And so for him to sit down and do that is very difficult. And plus, there's so many entanglements in his situation. How do you write about that? How do you write a story or have someone write a story when we all watch everything go down? And yet he wants to rush out there and make something happen. But this is the Knight of Swords. And this is an um, aggressive person, arrogant person. Um, talk, talk, talk in person, no plans, no idea, just out there in the world. Uh, if you do that, that'll be the worst book ever. And ultimately, he's got the um, the Pope card or the uh, High Priestess card. Um, excuse me, not the High Priestess, the Hierophant card. I don't know why I'm calling wrong card. It's the Hierophant. I'm sorry about that. But anyways, the Hierophant card is a very interesting card because it speaks, it's a number five, so it speaks of, you know, there's dramas and calamity and stuff like that but this person has overcome those things and this is saying that tr perhaps trump should work on himself maybe he needs therapy because this is where you're looking at therapists and um and teachers and professors and religious uh leaders and things like that and perhaps he needs to talk to somebody like that to come clean on himself or whatever but i don't see him writing anything at all mm -mm. uh He's first he's trying to juggle his money situation because he still owes big money out there. And then lastly, he actually has the magician card that says if he put his energy in the right direction, he could make what he wants. He could do what he wants. He can create, write his own ticket. But the problem with that is that the hair fan also represents a lot of lying and manipulation and uh, revenge and all things that are you manifesting on a negative side. So that's that part but I don't see him writing a book right now I see him doing a lot of talking and you know BSing I guess it's the bottom line but is he jealous of Pence absolutely absolutely is it's, it's, he, that's why he says he's going to write the greatest book of ever but anyways guys thank you for watching the channel um, make sure that you check out Linda and I on Thursday I don't think I'm going to make another video this week because I'm still in the recovery mode and we're still trying to get the house back to normal but I might
But anyways, we will be here on Thursday. Have a great day. Bye now.